So, all right, let's get started. All right. So for you guys who uh, don't know who I am, I'm Luke Weber, and you are within the Flipping Blueprint group page. And this is my buddy, uh, Chris Miller. Chris is the broker of Vegas Homes Realty, uh, which is my uh, uh, real estate company here in town, our company, yep. really. Yep. And um, so welcome to uh, Sip and Flip, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So now today we are going to be drinking some whiskey. That's what we're here for. So this is Sips and Flips. For you who are new to this format, what this is about is um, I've always had, uh, you know, there's people that do uh, business at the golf courses. I do business at bars. That's right. where I close yeah. deals. That's where I, I, I learn, I grow, and I do a lot of networking. And I've always had great conversations at bars, drinking with people, and just having a good time. Right. Now those are usually really private, intimate conversations that, you know, sometimes you might be across the bar and see somebody having a great conversation and think, man, I wonder what they're talking about. I want to be, I want to be the fly on the wall, right? right. Uh, so this is the ability for people to become the fly on the wall for our conversations, our real right. estate conversations. Yeah. So I bring in my friends, uh, my, my real estate uh, partners, uh, you know, all different uh, people from all walks of life that we get drunk, maybe not right. drunk, but a little tipsy, and we share some secrets. <laughs> You guys get to ask questions, we get to have some drinks, and uh, talk, banter, have some fun, and uh, now, yep. uh, how about we get some drinks? Okay. All right, so you're a whiskey guy. Of course. Right, so we're doing whiskey today. I'm a tequila guy, uh, but I do enjoy some good whiskey. Now, today, um, our drinks are actually sponsored by Gregory Cook from Castle & Cook. Uh, somebody that you and I both have done a lot of business with. Absolutely. Um, he, yeah. uh, I tried to get him to pop in today, but he wasn't available. But he did provide us some amazing beverages. And All right. uh, let's take a look. You know, we've got two different ones. I'm going to hand you that one. Okay. And I'm going to grab this one. So these are our drinks for the day. All right. So you're holding the Chestnut Farms Kentucky yep. Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And I'm holding the Glen Ross Spy Side Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now we're saying whiskey is the drink of the day, right? But right. whiskey is kind of like the the parent, and then it kind of oh, comes yeah. down. Yeah. You have Scotch and uh, bourbon and all, all different types of whiskeys and right. different types yeah. of mix. But so whiskey is pretty much everything, right? Oh yeah. But not everything is whiskey, and not everything is a right. Scotch, and not everything is a a, a, a malt yeah. or you know a rye, whatever you want to call right. it. Depends on how it's made. Yeah. And so where now, it's made. Yeah. So speaking of that, where it's made, yours is uh, from Kentucky. From Kentucky, yeah. and uh, this one is from Scotland. So it was pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. I, uh, I hear. Which one do you think we should open first? Oh, I think we should try the the one from far away. Far away. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going with the Glen Ross, the 18 year old Glen Ross. Now, Chris, if uh, back there, just sit it down. Now, I encourage everyone else, while you're uh, with us, I'm going to hand you that so you can start opening that. Okay. Um, let us know in the comments what you guys are drinking. We will get to real estate because that's what we do. But uh, again, this is about sips and then flips. So hopefully we get uh, uh, some participation in here because that's what this is about. Ask your questions and uh, let's have some real estate fun and drinks. Uh, now, how about we go... Got a round bottle, round glasses. Why don't you give us a little pour, just a little taste, and then we can decide if we want to do some ice. Um, I know that there's a lot of people that uh, may not be, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're traditionalists, right? Yeah, they like it neat. That's good. Okay, so now explain neat. Well, neat means no ice, no water, just the whiskey. Just the whiskey. Or the scotch. It's pretty good. Huh? <laughs> it smells good. All right. Mm. That's good. Ice, no ice. Or either way. Yeah. <laughs> so now, even though this is a scotch, I'm not a big scotch fan because I don't like how nosy it gets. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't use the right terminology. I just drink and drink what I like, right? Right. <laughs> but it's still a little sweet. Yeah. Now it's uh, as it uh, ages, it gets stronger. Yeah. Basically, right? It's. I mean, the proof it's, is one thing. We but get more of that nosy. Like yeah. You're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good, huh? Yeah, no, it's delicious. I don't even know if I want to try ice with that. I don't think so. No? <laughs> All right. Now that we've tasted it, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should pour a little bit more. 
There you go. All right, so I'm going to let you do the honors. <laughs> That's good. It is good. It's, 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 uh, it doesn't stay on your tongue at all. No, yeah, you just kind of have that, uh, that like, I don't know, it's almost like a vapor, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty good stuff. All right, so now, guys, I want to know what you are drinking. I posted the, these bottles, uh, which, again, Gregory Cook from Castle Cook Mortgage uh, provided for our yeah. entertainment today. Thank you. It's very good. Yeah, uh, we'll save you a little bit when you come to the office next time. <laughs> <laughs> next um, time. Okay, so, Chris, mm -hmm. why don't you... Um, well, why don't you tell me, I'm going to start off questions, since we don't have, okay. we're watching the comments here, I'm going to ask you a question about okay. real estate. So you're a, a real estate broker, right? right? That means you work with a lot of realtors. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Whether they're in our offices or other. Right. Um, what's one of the keys to being a successful, like I'm not just talking closing one deal a month kind of realtor, which mm -hmm. is great if you have 12 years, that's, that's a pretty good living. Um, but being really successful as a realtor, what's the number one thing that you think a realtor needs to do? I, well, the number one thing is uh, constantly calling, having those real estate conversations, right? Um, the more conversations you're having, obviously the, the more deals you're going to close from referrals or, um, you know, working leads or how, whatever the whatever your source is, but if you're not talking to the people, then uh, they don't know you're there. Maybe they show up on some advertising or an email or something, but people do business with people they talk to. Yeah, and, and, and talk to <laughs> right away. Right, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because the one that they start talking to first is the one that they're going to keep talking well, to a lot of times. Well, and, and uh, the NAR has put this out for years, uh, the National Association of Realtors, uh, that you know, 90 plus percent of people hire the first realtor they speak with. And so yeah. this has been ongoing. It's not, not new, but a, a lot of people don't uh, have enough of those conversations. I think the other thing that is real important for realtors to be successful is realizing that this is, you know, not just a 40 hour a week job. It's actually more. And there's uh, a lot of realtors that work a lot less than that. And uh, if you really want that success, it just takes a lot of work. You know, you're you're an entrepreneur, and you've got to be all things to your business uh, until you grow big enough to where people can be oh, other things in the business. I, right? I thought you were about to quote uh, <laughs> my. Uh, uh, you have to uh, build your business, or how did how did I put it? You have to build your business until they will wait for you. Right. right? Yes, of course. Yeah. And and that starts by so answering your day. damn phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which again, that so many people don't do. And whether you're a realtor or a real estate investor or the mortgage lender or whatever, if you're not picking up your phone, you're losing business. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's and whether it's the first phone call, first interaction with the client, or you've already had twenty calls with them, right. and you know what? Maybe they just found that house. They call you. You don't answer. And then they go and call the listing agent and say, hey, can you write that offer for me? Right. And if you don't have a brokerage agreement as a realtor, right. you just spent 20, 40, 60 hours on that client, and now you're not sure. going to die. Right. Answer your phone. Invest in yourself and invest in your clients. Right. Talk. Yeah. Well, and it's, uh, I, I think in this particular market, we're seeing a whole lot more of these um, clients that are much more fickle about you know, uh, the relationships they have with a realtor and they're quick to call the listing agent yeah. if they're not getting satisfied in that process as well. Yeah, and, and part of that is with, so we're located in Las Vegas, right? And mm -hmm. it's, it's been a hyper market for mm -hmm. the entire summer and mm -hmm. buyers were thinking, my realtor's not doing enough. And right. they're blaming their realtor that they're working with right. and thinking that they're not doing, even though you're doing amazing things, so they were going direct to the listing agent thinking that that would get them an in. Now, sure. this is something yeah. that I've done plenty of times where I call up the listing agent and say, hey, will you uh, represent me? I want to make an offer. Because, you, you, you know, it's like whatever you can to get that house. Right. And I've had real, realtors this summer tell me, Oh, I'm already representing too many people. <laughs> I'm like, great, right. I'll have my realtor set an offer. I actually did get one of those properties in that same scenario because I made a sure. stronger offer. I just knew the neighborhood better than everyone else, I think. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, sometimes uh, it works out that way. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so this is, uh, are you feeling, you're warming up a little? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah we might have to turn the air down. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> 
We always, so this is in our uh, offices here. At, so in, uh, if you haven't been to our offices, this is our Vegas Homes Realty Brokerage as well as our investing side of the business. So we're in my private office here with, mm -hmm. with all my fun stuff collected at from properties over the years. Uh, but then we also have quite a, a, a good booze selection as well. Yes, there is, yeah. Um, <laughs> man, I've, I've enjoyed this. I, I've, I've tasted why, it once before. I think that we should be. Uh, I don't understand exactly how much the price tag was. I know ah, it was okay. a lot. <laughs> so, so now price doesn't always mean quality. Well, of course not. I, I've got some $300 <laughs> bottles of tequila behind me that I don't think are that great. And they're open and I'll, I'll share with some people when they visit. Uh -huh. um, but it's just not for my palate. Right. So right. this model, the Glen Rofs, I think it's Rofs is how you pronounce it. Rofs, yeah. Rofs. Um, uh, this was about 140 bucks. Um, and um, you know, if you if you have the money, drink and enjoy what you you like. Mm -hmm. uh, now I know there's gonna be plenty of people that uh, taste this and uh, just don't uh, don't like it. Or they like something else, or they say, "Oh, we're drinking it wrong. You should have put a little splash of uh, water in it." Right. Why, why yeah. do you, Why do you put water in? Uh, it's supposed your... to bring out the flavor a little bit, like a, a drop. And uh, with a lot of good scotches, you know, I'll do that here and there. Um, yeah, you got to try it differently. Yeah. yeah. It definitely opens up, and, and like for tequila, I, I like and I throw it in how, and I drink it on the rocks uh, almost all the time. Yeah. Uh, because I like it because it, uh, it kind of mutes it sometimes too. Sure. Uh, and that's the same thing with scotches and whiskeys, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the viscosity of it, right? Mm -hmm. You guys want something fancy? The, uh, where you can see it on your, yeah. on your glass where it yeah. holds. Fine. Yeah, it holds. <laughs> I'm trying to do it. You can't really see it in this glass. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you can see the viscosity. Not so good on the right? camera, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, this is a new camera, so everyone can hear us okay. Uh, give us some likes, give us some thumbs up or reactions. Uh, uh, we appreciate it. Um, so one of my teaser posts for uh, getting people to come join us on the video uh -huh. was I told people not to buy my book, The Flipping Blueprint. Yeah, I saw something and I thought it was weird, but I was just going to wait and not <laughs> ask early. So, so why is that? Well, uh, you know I've been working on the second edition. Yes. Um, I, and I actually just got the second edition out to the publisher, final uh, uh, adjustments all made to it, and uh, it should be in print uh, within a month. Okay. And we've updated it, got some new numbers in there. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys the numbers yet, but we will in this video. Oh. That's okay. a cliffhanger, a little teaser okay. there. Yeah. Um, uh, because the market's changed, a lot of things have changed. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I know you guys on the real estate side of things, just the uh, on the the front line of the retail of real oh, estate, right? right? Um, you've seen um, trying to get somebody to go do repairs for a buyer. Oh, right. right? Yeah. You, you, it's hard to get anybody to do anything. Get off their butt for a thousand bucks. I mean, it, it is. Right. Well, yeah, the cost of everything is gone. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, that's it. We're we're behind uh, where we need to be with things, and we're still expecting things to be like they were six months ago, and they're just not. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, the cost of everything is up. Every, every month is yeah. different. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, now, something uh, that I've been telling people, whether I'm uh, uh, talking to them to, to buy their houses or coaching our realtors, is uh, we're over in, in Las Vegas. Uh, this is really uh, what's going on and I know that in other markets across the country it's, it's similar things happen we go through this this summer buying season where things just skyrocket inventory goes down right. there's feeding frenzy feeding frenzy and then we get to August and things slow down because what happens in August people go to school and the yep. weather changes right. um, and it's it's you have to take a look at that and you see sales drop off so the, the, the frenzy kind of Everyone steps back and takes a breath, and yeah. kids go back to school, and market the inventory kind of picks up a little bit, and then towards uh, middle of September, and, and here in Vegas we really go almost through October, it picks up again with more real buyers, where we see the people that were sitting on the sidelines during the summer may have missed out on properties, 
didn't want to overpay for something. They think they're, they're right. going to be able to get a deal now and not get into a bidding war, come out of the woodworks, and then they buy houses. Yep. So uh, we're already, we already experienced it. We, we put two on market this weekend. Uh, we've got offers on both this weekend. But instead of having 20 showings on each house, we had, I think, two on each house. So it, it just shows instead of, you know, if we had 20 showings, we might have had three or four offers on them. Right. I mean, depending on the house, some house we might have 10 or 12. But uh, overall, we were running at maybe a 30 to 40% um, offer to viewing ratio. Right. Uh, now, for what we had this weekend, no, it's a sm it's smaller basis, but it's a 50%. One out of two made offer on the house. Right. And they both. We negotiated, and I think we're under contract officially on both of them. Um, Roger's drinking a Coke right now. That's great. Um, let's see, James is picking up some kids. Hey, guys, uh, let me reach out to some of you Matt's out there, uh, Gabe's out there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Ask your questions. If we mention something, please ask questions if you don't understand or you're curious. I don't care if we didn't even mention it and you just have a question about our, our whiskey today or um, – the fact that I'm wearing a really cool Vegas Homes Realty shirt today. Yeah, appreciate uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I thought I remember representing you. Uh, I should have worn mine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and uh, um, again, our drinks are sponsored by Gregory Cook from yep. Castle and Cook. Um, he's actually, we gave him a, one of the tenants that we have in one of our rentals wanted to buy it. So we gave that tenant over to Greg. Greg got him uh -huh. pre-approved. Um, got it moving forward, and this is a process about three months along, and oh, right. uh, uh, we're under contract with them, and that's moving forward. So that's, that's cool. They, yeah. And they didn't think they'd ever be able to qualify. So Greg's doing a great right. job on that. And then they get to stay where they were living, right? Uh, yeah, and that's yeah. that's the big <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> and they sell the house without having to do repairs, also, which is great for me. I mean, it's, you know, and, I, and I'm going to have to get investments. Yeah, 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 it works. And so we do right. that. Uh, we actually do reach out to our tenants. Right. Um, and we tell them, especially with the way rents have gone up, hey, Joe, I'll let you know uh, that answer here in just a second. Um, uh, I let uh, um, our tenants know a couple months before uh, their lease is up that um, the rent is going to go up. Because right. the rents from last year to this year, oh, I mean, we're talking 500 to $1,500 more a month in rent in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, Crazy it's, number. It's, it's more insane than the sales market, really, when yeah. you're looking at the total increase. It's just staggering. And the availability is is much less because um, uh, all the land is selling off. Affordability. Well, that too. Yeah. Right. It's both. It's yeah. There's less of them available, and they cost a fortune. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. Joe, uh, Mr. Mr. Joseph Knickerbocker, a longtime fan, uh, often uh, caller. Um, <laughs> See, hey Luke, what are your thoughts on the current Las Vegas market with evictions and foreclosures action picking up here in the next 90 to 120 days? Um, I think that's a, uh, it's going to be a small part of the uptick in inventory. Yeah. I mean, we're already seeing it on the retail side for things with, before yeah. the evictions even happened. Right. Well, and I think um, it, it's, a lot of these people are going to restructure loans, I think, and so mandatory. Uh, that they're going to make it mandatory yeah, for, for for the foreclosures. And then the other positive thing is they approved recently um, money that's basically going to go and help people who weren't paying their rent to get their landlords caught up who might be behind because they weren't paying their mortgage because the people weren't paying their rent. So it, it probably won't be as big of an impact as. If Some people might think it's going. It's not going to be a tidal wave. Yeah, right? yeah, not at so, all. So, so we yeah. recently reached out to our uh, our preferred company here in town that does our evictions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's bad that you have a preferred company. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's part of the business, well, right? Who's good at it? Uh, yeah, yeah, we use them. <laughs> um, so the uh, um, they they told us, and this was just on just yesterday because there was a new uh, the let's see the. CDC's mor uh, uh, moratorium was uh, struck down by the Supreme Court. Yes. So we went and we're here in Nevada. And we said, okay, so what's that mean for us? What changes? And basically, what in July, I think our governor signed a bill mm -hmm. stating that 
if a tenant has filed for um, rent assistance, they could possibly be safe from eviction through 2023. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Right. Because yeah. the, and what they did for the landlords, the mortgage holders, um, is that the banks are going to have to help them out for about a year. So there's right. this, this overlap. So, Joe, nothing's going to happen real fast here. And there's, a, trust me, and actually we even thought about this, um, creating a company to help the um, the people not able to pay their rent right now or choosing not to pay their rent, which, right. I mean, we're real serious about it. We know that's the case for a lot of people. Um, um, that uh, it's it could be great lead generation. The government's handing a lot of money out to companies. It, right. and a lot of yeah. things they could do, uh, right. but we're not doing it. It's it's a, something else. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, James Simmons, let's see, you're saying you think that putting a buyer into a buyer broker agreement is a mandatory thing these days. Chris, I'll let you answer that one because that's uh, your realm. Yeah, and I think that it's becoming more and more necessary, kind of like what Luke was saying a few minutes ago, is how these people will just kind of jump ship the second that uh, they feel like their buyer's agent isn't doing good enough, and it might not be that the buyer's agent's not doing good enough. But I think when you when you go over the buyer broker agreement, you're able to, <laughs> nice pour, uh, you're able to uh, go over what's important about the relationship and then you can make those commitments that are going to reassure them that you're on it. You're the one who's going to help them find this house. And that if you're not doing a good enough job, you give them an out. But it's really about getting them to come to you versus just jumping ship and, and going and calling a listing agent or whatever because you want to establish, hey, it's okay if you think something's not going well, let's discuss it. Versus this person is just not very good, let's ghost them and never talk to them again. And that's what we want to avoid. So if you can get that conversation started, then you know I think you're in a better spot. I think that the buyer brokerage agreement, and for you guys who maybe not don't know what that is, that's a contract that the realtor has a potential buyer sign saying, hey, any house you buy in the next six months, 12 months, um, whether I bring it to you or not, I get a commission on it. Uh, right. Each market reads a little different, but that's the basic premise behind it. Now, the way I look at those is for, for realtors, that's a way for you to really sell your services to them. And right. this, this is best where you're sitting down, you're, you're talking with them, you're face to face. And that's what a lot of realtors don't do anymore, these face to faces. Right. And, and I've really been trying to push that with our yeah. agents. Well, they yeah. backed off because of COVID. Yeah, and, and that's and it's, and it's we a world we're used to that. Yeah, and so, so I, I want to start seeing people bring that back more mm -hmm. where they, they sit and they go over that and say, hey, listen, this is my commitment to you and your commitment to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I only work with a certain number of buyers because I know that to treat my buyers correctly, I can't work with 50 of them and, and treat you right. right. So, I, so I need to make sure that you're committed to me. That's why we have this agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's, that's a great way for you to really sell your services because realtor services right. are great when they're done correctly. Sure. Um, uh, now, will some buyers say, no, I'm not gonna sign that? Yes then you as the realtor have to decide, do I push it, do I make it happen, do I trust this person, what's the, the risk benefit scenario on right. that? Right, yeah, how much time yeah. are you putting into yeah. this person who's really not willing to commit yeah. to the process? Yeah. And, and for if you're a new agent, uh, Joseph, thank you, I've, uh, ha I have poured a drink once or twice in my life, so <laughs> I appreciate the, uh, the uh, support. Uh, uh, but if you are a new agent, it's gonna be more important to get that experience of that pitch of, even if they say no, say, okay, you know what? That's great. I'm, I'm gonna trust in you. You know, kind of just lay out this guilt thing. I'm gonna trust in you that you're, you're gonna be with me and I want you to know that I'm still gonna commit myself to you and let's go find you a house, right? right. Because to, to get that experience and go walk properties, and is there a risk that that person's gonna go buy a house with somebody else? Yes. Right. but 
you, the experience is what really makes you an expert in this business. So right. go after it. Yeah, um, Let's see. I had one on it. Uh, this is Roger commenting about the uh, what we were just talking about. Yep. Uh, don't work. They take their time assigning reps. So oh, wait, wait. Oh, that might be about. Oh, Roger, that might be about uh, evictions and stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, each company is a little different, uh, and a lot of them are really messed up right now. And a lot of it, like COVID, it, it, mm -hmm. it's changed a lot of business models and the way people oh, work. Sure. Yeah. I'm just scrolling through some comments here, seeing where we're at. Uh, Want to make sure we get all you guys' comments. Thanks for um, commenting, guys. It's a. Uh, it's always fun to uh, uh, not just have us be two talking heads to ourselves, right. <laughs> because. This is our conversation, but you're part of it too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Matt's asking, "What do you think about Vegas being uh, in the top ten overvalued markets?" I believe it was overvalued by forty-four um, percent. I read this article. Did you? I haven't yeah. read this one. So I, I saw this last week. My initial reaction and, is, yeah, uh, the forty-four. <laughs> that's crazy. That's way it's, crazy high. But I know a lot of it has to do with income. But, well, uh, so the the Fortune article here, though, the metric that they based that on was had to do with previous home sales right well oh. the demand changes right and so yeah when demand changes inventories are shrinking values are going to increase that's basic supply and demand economics but the way that that thing reads is oh well the the the, the amount went up in this amount of money yeah well yeah, it's a lot you're, of money you're, over you're, a period of time. Yeah, I, it, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make it, any sense. Is Boise, so. Idaho number one because they've it gone is, up. It is, yeah, oh, Boise, yeah. Idaho is the number one, yeah. Because <laughs> they've gone up like 44% yeah. this year. It's, right, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. And the demand is there for it, right? right? It's, um, it's that California exodus is really yeah. driven. And so the cities that are on this list are all people coming from yeah. California driving those markets up. It, and that's so. why I've always stressed to you guys to do your own numbers. Take take whenever you yeah. see something that's posted. That, and you know, Fortune's great. I love reading their articles, and they've got good stuff in there. But you have to take everything with a little bit of uh, a grain of salt. Yeah, look at look at how they figured it out. Yeah, yeah. And, and even uh, even the uh, NAR, the National Association of Realtors, because. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I've talked about their economists before. Well, the statistics are great, but interpretation <laughs> yes. is yeah. can be very different. But the same is with, so, with yeah. Case Schiller, which yeah. is the you know the cream right. of the crop. It's yeah. still you have to look at the numbers and understand what they're really saying because they're going to dissect this group of numbers and say what this group of numbers means. But there's going right. to be another group over here that can say the polar opposite. Right. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're drinking, cheers. Cheers. cheers, Chris, and cheers to Mr. Gregory Cook for providing today's booze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. We have to share some of this, Greg. It's good. <laughs> no, I, I think it might be uh, might be all gone. Might be gone time. by then. <laughs> uh, if you guys are having a drink with us, uh, please let us know what you are drinking. And cheers and salute to you from wherever you are. Um, scrolling through some comments here. See, um, oh hey, oh awesome, Roger. Go, uh, go get uh, the property at four o'clock. Don't be late. You know that's another thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a realtor, if you're an investor, if you're anybody, don't be late. Yeah, don't be late. You, you know what? In a job, if you're late, what happens? You know what's late for me? <laughs> if if if, I, if I'm five minutes, if if I have a four o'clock appointment and I show up at three fifty-five, I'm late. Right. That that's the way I feel. I, I typically show up at sub 10, 15 minutes early. Right. I've I've always been that. Now, yes. you said something the other day though about uh, until they come, until they're waiting on you. Uh, oh, yeah. Do do the uh, I forget exactly how you worded it, but because so, it makes sense. Yeah. But you can't do that till you get to that point. Right. So you you create your business until they're waiting. So somebody will wait for you. Right. Right. So but. You still don't be a dick about it. Yeah, you don't want to be late on purpose. Yeah, you should be right. yeah. 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 You're the fashionably late, but you know when when you got money riding on it, man, you guys gotta show yeah, up. Get it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's that that's always been a pet peeve of mine. And um, uh, you know, it's I've always had it where I thought, okay, if I show up early, and even if they show up on time and they know I've been there waiting for them, I'll have a step up on them on the negotiations. But over the years, I found out that a lot of people just don't fucking care. <laughs> yeah. And it's, but it's, you know, and they, they just go through life in that way where it's, 
it's not you know oh you know no big deal oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a couple minutes I'm a couple minutes late and I'll be there in a couple minutes right. when somebody tells what do you if if you call me up and say hey Luke I'm at the property um, it's four o'clock we had a four o'clock appointment just wondering uh, how close you are and I say oh, I'm just around the corner a couple minutes right what do you say okay see when you get there but, okay yeah. so my response is oh okay great where, where are you at right and if you tell me that you are you know somewhere where I know is 15 minutes away right I, yeah. I know you're not just a couple minutes away uh, you, you know your cities know your areas so that you right. are early to appointments so that you right. are um, managing things um, and sometimes it does actually do does give you that leg up right and, and especially going into negotiations um, yeah they feel yeah, bad when Roger, they get there so late <laughs> I, showed, I showed to one earlier and the agent was 30 minutes late yeah and that's why it's beautiful to have cell phones or smartphones now because you can do so much work on your smartphone <laughs> yeah while you're waiting oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I do a lot of work on my smartphone uh, um, uh, when I'm waiting on other people but you know what while I'm waiting I'm not inconveniencing myself because I've always got something I can do sure whether it's posting for you guys in the group um, uh, catching up on phone catching calls, up on phone calls yeah. talking with our realtors and helping them uh, through situations yep. I was uh, actually I was waiting for one of my subcontractors on a property today mm -hmm. and I was uh, talking with uh, one of our realtors about uh, a difficult uh, uh, transaction he's got going right yeah. now and mm -hmm. you know make most of your time don't let other people dictate what you do or don't do with your time uh, so that's that lesson <laughs> um, keep uh, Keep uh, asking questions. Are we? Uh, do we sound tipsy at all yet? I, I, I feel like our <laughs> pace has increased. I feel like we got louder. We did get louder, <laughs> and that's because we got excited about it. We music. did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, and and that's the the fun thing about this is I know you love real estate. You've been in it since '06, right? right? So I, I started. I bought my first house in '03, '02. Mm -hmm. uh, I started appraising back in '01. Um, so we've got uh, a good amount of uh, years yeah. behind us. Right. Um, well, I purchased my first home to live in in Oman. So uh, yeah, I've been yeah. like that since yeah. then as well. Yeah. So it's uh, um, you know it's uh, it's been a fun ride, up ups and downs. Mm -hmm. and, and now I know a lot of people wonder if we are headed towards a down right now. That's one you know the earlier question about uh, evictions. All oh, right. right? Um, I really don't think we are. I think we're headed towards a stabilization, which yeah. is going to be great for everybody yeah um, you know things are gonna it's gonna step back and cool off a little bit but when you go from no, a lot of people don't even understand that our inventory has already tripled in amount of availability right. tripled for the amount of houses available now we were at a, such a low amount right but it's still not even close yeah. to being normal but, yet. but yeah. talking about statistics and what yeah. like oh the inventory in Las Vegas has tripled don't buy a house there Right. Well, yeah, you're not buying a house because they're hard to find right now. Right. You can still find them though. Right. Well, and and the amount of uh, homes that are going under contract is sold each week is still triple the amount of ones coming on the market. Yeah. Which is something we I looked at today with an agent. So it's uh it's still uh, slim pickings for we, homes, and it's going to be good I think for a while. Yeah, and we are still uh, on the for the investors uh, in the group here. Uh, we are still seeing houses um, starting to fall out more than we did over the summer. Yeah, right? we're hitting back, back on the market. market. Yeah, uh, and those are the people that may have bid too high for a house. Yeah. Uh, they they um, you know during their five day or ten day inspection period they're kind of cooled off and they're like, whoa, I think I'm paying too much for this. Right. Let me let me back out because the carpet's dirty during my inspection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and it's fine, you know, they can, right? You gotta know your inspection dates and, and yeah. if you build your time frames and your appraisal deadlines and all that so that you know when you can back out of a contract. Um, but uh, um, you know, I think we're gonna get back to normalcy. Uh, we had a class here in the brokerage on Friday mm -hmm. and uh, it was hosted by one of the title companies and uh, Jimmy Dagg was the speaker if, if, if any realtors in the group probably have done a class with him live class oh, yeah. um, and I'm trying to remember what the fallout ratio was it's it's um, I think it's three out of ten right now are falling out 
maybe oh, four the, out of yeah, ten. Yeah, that he was right? talking about at the beginning. Yeah, yeah filled it. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was like uh, three out of ten. Yeah, and, and what so, we really came down to was communication is yeah. going to be key on that because if you're communicating with your clients, they're less likely to fall out. Right. But more fallouts are happening. Uh, so you as the investor, it, so I, I'll tell this story. Um, I went to a house this weekend uh, to make an offer on it. Uh, I showed up and there was a, another, uh, there was a wholesaler that was at the property when I showed up and he was getting out of his contract with them. Because he offered way too much on it. Well, <laughs> yeah. there was no money to be made. Yeah. Um, then they were already on, under contract for a month or so with this uh, seller, o old lady in an age restricted community, and uh, the lady thought it was sold. Right. Now they went in and they made an offer, could it perform, and the ladies move into a assisted living facility, all kinds of stuff. But uh, then the seller, the wholesaler, backs out because. It's they, they made probably probably made the offer on the phone, and yeah. they said, "Well, what do you want?" And if I, I don't think the lady said what she really wanted because she was pretty crafty. I don't think she really wanted to sell at the end of the day. I think she just wanted to keep it. Um, but uh, uh, they gave her a price that was too much. They came up with a some BS excuse saying, "Oh, our our investors don't have the funds right now, and, and they they don't you know, whatever whatever yeah, it was." And they backed it. But it was funny, as I'm walking the outside of the house, the, the guy that's sitting there says, oh, I know Luke. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but it was just one of those funny things. Like, right. uh, So I'm, I, I walk into this conversation now after this guy's just left, and she's like, oh, he knew you. I'm like, oh, I've, I've been in this town for a while. I know a lot of business, but, um, you know, hopefully it's a good thing. Right. So. Um, keep asking your questions, guys. Um, and uh, I haven't seen much for other people drinking. You know, it's only 3.37 here in Las Vegas. Right. Ooh, you know what? But that means it's, uh, you know, 6.37. What that means Vegas. is we probably need to finish these. And try the other one. And try the other one. We're, we're halfway through. Yeah. Okay. Um, Luckily, I have less than my glass in there. <laughs> <laughs> is it a race? Cheers, everyone. That's good, though. It's good. Yeah, I like it. 18-year-old scotch, scotch whiskey, right? Because this is a whiskey show. Right. And for it to be so smooth, not stuck in your nose for, like, I'm not going to be smelling this for the next 10 hours. Right? I'm not going to wake up tomorrow morning being like, what the hell is that? Like, oh, I feel gross. Right. It's so smooth, it, it hardly hits the tongue. Um, this is good stuff. Now this yeah. bottle, uh, again, I'll show it one more time before we move on to the next one. Um, and I do have clean glasses for our other one. Um, uh, they do have a, a 25 year old that's about 450 bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good stuff. It's, it's available throughout Las Vegas uh, with a couple different stores. I know uh, Total Wine has it. Um, um, I don't know where I was well, going with that. <laughs> if you got, just like what you were saying a second ago, if you had this, um, you know, during the winter time, I'd take this over an Iclo any day. Oh yeah, yeah, clear right. right out and lay down, and go to sleep. Yeah. Or uh, in front of a fireplace <laughs> up on the mountain. Well, there's that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but this feels like it'll crush a cold. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Clear that now. All right, um, we got another question here, Matt Smith. Matt, I don't know if you're drinking or anything, uh, but if you are, cheers. Uh, what percent are you making offers at in Vegas right now? Oh. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, okay, well let's go with one of the ones I just locked up, um, and you guys can run the numbers on this. I'm, uh, let's see, I'm buying it at 410000 it needs about, I'll say it needs about 15000 in repairs, and I've got an ARV of 520 on it. So, I mean, rough numbers, that's about 80% of ARV. Um, now that's... Uh, you know, could I have gotten it cheaper? I, I might have been able to get it for another five grand less, uh, but it's a, a nice stucco tile. It's It's got everything you want. 
um, and I know it's going to go fast. So I, I, I really consider all those factors into my houses right. when I make my offers. A lot of people go out, you know, in, in the book I call it, in the Flipping Looper book, okay. I, I, I have my no formula formula. Right. Because every house is a little different, and you really have to factor in time frame for things. I'll probably have this house for a total of two months. Yeah. No, some houses you're going to have for, uh, you know, I was just looking at one in um, uh, 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 Lake Mojave uh, down in Arizona. Right. And I knew that house was going to be a minimum 12-month project uh, because it's going to be a, and I know, Matt, your question was about Vegas. Right. But I know that that house, 12 months, it's, uh, the construction will probably take me two to three months because it's a smaller market. It takes a little bit more time. It's a little more complex. Um, really, my other one was just carpet paint and a couple other little minor updates. Um, uh, but this one was uh, roof and drywall and pool and landscape. And, and it also sits right next to a porn store. <laughs> yeah, 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 so that that, that will well, factor in. Yeah, that's definitely going to be, uh, yeah. yeah. But, but each house is different. So when people say, what, what Airbnb are you buying at? And I, and I take a look at it and I say, well, you know, lately I've been buying anywhere from 30 to 84% of ARV. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's huge. And how, and how much money are you putting right. into it? So this one you just bought here, yeah. you're looking at 15 grand, but something that you're normally going to sell for over 500 might take quite a bit more right. in repair. Yeah, and I mean, so, I've got projects where yeah. the repairs are over 200,000 going right now. Right, yeah. And, you know, so, you know, 10, 15 grand, I, I'll, I'll look at that house twice, maybe. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, you're it's, like, this is a buy. Yeah, it's, well, I, I mean, it's, it's done, right? Yeah. It's easy. Um, uh, then it's less complicated. So, Matt, it really depends on the overall of the project and the house and, and everything like that. But um, I would say on average, I'm still probably close to that 70%. I'm not buying as many houses as I was uh, a couple years ago. Um, number one, I don't need to buy. I don't need to do 100 houses this year. I'm, I'm cool doing 50. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, um, you know, if I was being more aggressive with my purchasing, trying to do more houses, mm -hmm. I know that my percentage would have to be going up on average. So instead of being on an average of maybe 70% of ARV of what I'm buying, and for you guys who don't know, ARV is after repair value. Um, but the, um, uh, I'd probably be at 75, just, you know, being a little more competitive on some of these offers. Right. Uh, I do my own marketing. I buy from wholesalers. I buy from realtors, all different kinds right. of things. All right, Nick's got a question. Um, I'm going to open up another bottle while Chris, you answer this. Read it okay. off, and so, then uh, sure. So, a question from Nick it says, uh, "How are our agents overcoming uh, for sale by owners?" He says, "Running into a lot of inventory is so low. Anyone can sell their own houses themselves. Uh, kind of the mentality, but their houses are listed twenty thousand over comps <laughs> and sitting on the market like forty plus days." And the owners are stubborn. Yes, the owners are stubborn. And um, I, I would say that, you know, our agents aren't necessarily focused on them. However, they'll show them, you know, if, if that's what's, you know, in somebody's, you know, what they're looking for, what their criteria is uh, to buy a home. And it, it's funny uh, that this question actually comes up because I actually was speaking with a for sale by owner last week who called me and asked me, do I have any buyers for his home? And so I asked him, well, your home was just listed with a realtor. Uh, what happened? He goes, oh, well, I, I can sell this myself. And then so I took a look at the comps as I was talking with him on the phone. And I told the gentleman, I was like, well, you know, I could have buyers for your home if it was priced appropriately. <laughs> so what uh, what do we got here? Go ahead and introduce it real quick. Well, this is the uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Chestnut Farms. Bottled in bond. Now I'm going to be honest. I don't know 100% what bottled in bond means. I don't. But know. it was in a fancier bottle and it cost more. <laughs> so this bottle runs about um, 100 bucks. And actually, what the funny thing is on this one is it's 100 proof. Now we, we had this conversation earlier. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are we still talking about Fizbos? Yeah, we'll get back in. Okay. It. Yeah. Uh, and these are one of our one of our wholesalers uh, got us these fun glasses. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do a little pour. If you oh, guys are drinking taster. with us, yeah, we're going to do a little taster. Okay. We're going to try this guy out. 
That even sounds sexy coming out of that bottle. Yeah, well, you get the little air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. And cheers to uh, Greg from Castle and Cook yeah, for thanks, uh, the, another bottle. Mm. Ooh, you can taste the bourbon in that one. <laughs> so that's a lot mm. sweeter. It yeah. stays on the tongue. Mm -hmm. It's warmer. <laughs> yeah. It is warmer. Yeah. This it's one smooth, I might though. say the ice cube might be the way to go. I, I, I do, and that's why we do yeah. the little taster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're both delicious. Yeah, they're both good. <laughs> But yeah, and I think the yeah the ice cube may make sense with this one uh, as compared to the the scotch. It definitely has a little bit more burn. It's not as smooth. Yeah, but it's not in a bad way. But you know, it's also hundred proof. Right. So a little so stronger. it's it's stronger, yeah. and that's where that's coming from. Right. Yeah. Versus an eighty. We're pro we probably did so normally if you're doing a tasting, you go from the younger to the older. Right. Right. So this one. And I think that's part of the bottle and bond because it doesn't have the age on it. Uh, where uh, it uh, and it says under U.S. government supervision, so I don't know who we have to thank for that. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, um, it is basically think of it as a, it's a small batch um, um, uh, bourbon whiskey. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, that's tasty though. Yeah, it's I, got a good aftertaste. For sure. <laughs> uh, I do want to try it with the cube though. Yeah. All right. See that, and then I'll, I'll finish talking about the. Uh oh, he's just starting to stick together. All right. All right, guys, we got perfect square ice cubes for our square glasses too. All right, you keep talking. Yeah. So uh, back to the the Fizbo, the for sale by owners. So <laughs> what what I was saying before is I I told the gentleman when I talked to him on the phone about um, you know do I have buyers for his home. Well, sure, I would have buyers for his home, but it has to be priced in a way that, you know, might appraise. It can't be so overvalued that um, there's no way that the uh, buyer can make good on the agreement. And uh, if he really wanted that type of help, then, uh, you know, he's going to need to, one, adjust his, his price, but two, he probably should be speaking with a realtor about listing his home and, and doing what it will take to get the home sold. So many of these for sale by owners seem to think that they're going to uh, just handle the whole process without uh, knowing what's involved. And I asked the gentleman, what do you, you know, have you ever done this before? And his answer was no. I was like, well, are you aware of like all the required disclosures that the state of Nevada is going to make you give to your potential buyer? Oh, and he right. says no. That and is so, a, that is a great way for a realtor to get that FISBO. Oh, absolutely. What we're talking about, yeah. even just talk. So the state says when when you sell a house, and the, now this isn't just Nevada. This is most this is states. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think somewhere between thirty five and forty of the states actually have this rule, where you have to have a written disclosure of any known problems on a house. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, basically if you're in a state, it probably requires it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so if you're dealing with a FISBO with a, uh, with a private seller and they're wanting to not deal with realtors say, oh, okay, well, you're, you're doing all the required legal stuff you have to do as a seller. Right. Mm -hmm. And well, they could come back and come after you if you don't disclose known problems. Oh, well, you know, I, I, I told them that the door sticks out in the garage. It's like, well, hang on. You told them, but was it written? Well, by the way, have you done any improvements to the house? Have you done any of this, 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 this? All right. these things that need to be disclosed legally when you are a private seller of a of a uh, of real property. Um, so that's a great, great tip for mm -hmm. any of you realtors watching on yeah. on how to get those fizbos to turn into listings. Yes. Right? Yeah, and, and of course, yeah, the whole time that was That's that was great. my point is I was I was trying to flip this guy to a listing. He's still sitting on the market, by the way, and I'm letting him sweat, and I'll call him back in a couple more days from now if he still hasn't sold the house, and I'll be like, so how's it going? And say, I do have some buyers, but they're going to be at this price. But I think before we could do that, yeah. here's what I suggest we do, and then it's going to be about a listing so, agreement, and we would move forward, and I'd so, tell him how I'm going to market his home and get him the top yeah. dollar that his house would sell for. Yeah. So what I do is, and, and this is this is how I I teach it, um, is if 
This is this is really good. <laughs> you try it with the cube? Uh, not yet. Try it. Yeah. If you oh, have yeah. ever had yeah, ice so. cream that was like bourbon flavored. Oh yeah, I have it. That's yeah. that, it is so smooth yeah. and oh that's good. That's sweet. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um I get it. <laughs> All right. So um uh da, 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 fizbos um I'm getting a lot of cousins God, all of a sudden damn it <laughs> uh, what was i saying um uh, how to do man you're talking about the the fizbo conversion you, right okay no? yeah so okay. so turning them into a uh a listing going that route right God damn it it's 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 right there Okay. Um, well, maybe, maybe we should address another question because yeah. they're. How many hours to make per now. day? Do you use any yeah. software to make the offers like Rehab? Don't make don't don't do offers through uh, software. Don't don't ever do that, Matt, because most of the softwares do a um, some sort of formula calculation, whatever, and it's you're, you're offering two hundred and twelve thousand nine hundred and thirteen dollars. As a realtor, when you get right. one of those offers, you know it's a bullshit fucking offer. Yeah, and I had uh, I had a few. <laughs> On one uh, a couple I, months ago, I, I even put this in my it. book. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Because unless you're round, if you can round it up to the next thousand, but every house is different. Yes. And and that's the that's the biggest issue here is that every house is different. So when you you do those automated offerings, they they just don't work, and you miss out on so many opportunities because they offer sure. too low or they offer way too much, and, and you have to take a look at each house individually. So Matt, today um, I had a, a busy day with. Um, um, uh, some of my construction stuff, getting ready for this event, and uh, uh, a couple other things going on. I, I'm doing a custom closet in our, our, our master bedroom. Uh, yeah, finally. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I had stuff going on. So I, I think I made eight offers today. <laughs> uh, but but any any That's given day, day, I'm probably somewhere between two and twenty offers a day. Um, so that's that's to answer that question. Um, this is, um, uh, let's see. God damn it. The, the Fizbo, uh, it's bothering question. You. It is. Yeah. Oh gosh. I wish I, I should rewind this so that I, I know what I was saying. Uh, um, well, what's how are you doing on time, by the way? Do you know what I believe right at four? Do you? No. Okay. No, all right. We, we we're going to go a little we bit longer. Carry over. That's we'll fine. go a little bit yeah. longer. Um, all right. This is, this is fun guys. These are great questions mm -hmm. and cheers to you guys for showing up and Cheers to anybody that's watching this on the Flipping Blueprint channel on YouTube, where I'll post this later. Oh, you know what I still need to do? Mm -hmm. I still need to give my numbers for uh, that are going to be in the second edition of the Flipping. All right, Blueprint. yeah, we said that earlier in should the I, teaser, but you didn't finish. It. I, I think yeah. I, I should probably do that yeah. now. I'm going to answer this next one, and then I'll see if anybody comments and says yes, I want those numbers, and I'll give those numbers. Uh, let's see, Rommel said, I remember hearing you speak about three years ago. I think it said to be, uh, hang on, there we go. Uh, uh, let's see, I said to be flexible in your acquisition aggressiveness, depending on the current market conditions. Plus, in your fix and flips, you would make at least 20,000 profit. Does that advice still hold true? Um, yeah, you should always be flexible on your offers. That, that's why I don't stick to a, um, a, a formulated offer. Each house is different. When I'm running my numbers, I'm considering. So I, I ran one today that was on a, a busy road. Uh, busy road near an airport. Um, uh, it had some good features to it and it had some bad. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at the houses, then this is why you really have to take a look at each house individually. Right. If you look at houses that were two streets in, I mean, I'm talking busy road. You, right. It's, it's, the noise level is way different. It's a named yeah. road and a named road and an airport. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so It's so a noisy place. It had a lot going for it yeah. if you wanted a commercial <laughs> building. But sure. this was yeah. not commercial. It was residential. Um, and... Uh, I, so I, I sent it to my business partner Tony and said, "Hey, give me your air, air B on this one. I'm going to do mine because we do this double blind thing on these more complicated ones." And he came in at uh, 325. I was at 325 to 340, knowing that I might have an extended marketing time to get that 340. Right. Um, and I offered, I think, 225 on this house, and it needed about 30,000 repairs. 
you know, that's mm-hmm. that ends up giving me at the end of the day, I'll probably make somewhere between thirty and forty thousand. Uh, now, to the second part of this question uh, was uh, make at least twenty thousand in profit. Um, for me, as a seasoned investor, right? Uh, you know, I've had conversations about this sure. over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, as a seasoned investor, I'll contemplate, uh, calculate my risk based on the uh, how easy a project is or how difficult it is. Right. So if I know it's going to go along because it's on a busy road, if I know it's a very complicated remodel, uh, the more work I have to put into it, uh, the more money I should make for it. Right. So if I'm doing yeah. a $200,000 remodel, if I made $20,000 on it, I probably lost 50000 over the, the time, energies, expense, loss of yeah. capital on that project yeah, versus other projects, projects instead. right? Yeah. It, it all plays into it. Yeah. Um, but as a, a, any investor looking at a potential flip, I, I really do think you should have a baseline of $20,000 as your minimum profit. Because yeah. if one hiccup happens, if, if something goes wrong, that's really going to cost you five grand. Um, so the people that are buying houses right now, hoping to make money or maybe going to make money, uh, hoping on the appreciation, all those people that bought in June, July, and August, hoping for appreciation, when yeah. we're we're flatlining a little bit for that, yeah, at, they're going to put their forty grand into it, try to sell it at, during Christmas, and and they're going to make or lose money. I right. mean that that is that's the way it really works. Um, so I, I make sure I, I run my numbers conservatively, and I want to make at least twenty thousand. Now I can tell you that this year, because of appreciation, my average profit's probably running closer to forty. Um, but I'm also doing half as many deals as I did two years ago right. by choice. Yeah. Um, now there are still deals out there, but I'd rather make more and do less, and I've kind of crafted my business that way. Mm-hmm. And you guys might think that you know doing fifty deals in a year is is like, a lot. Like, it's a lot. But, but, but it's we, about we, half. We've got a machine yeah. going, right? And you you see it. You yeah. see it every day. And you right. see me in here, and I, you know I'm working. You know we still take vacations. Yeah, yeah. he takes <laughs> vacation, but the guy works you know sixty hours a week. So yeah, and, and it's it's by design. Yeah, I'm I'm not the kind of person puts the, that, puts the work in. I, I couldn't put in twenty hours. Uh, right. I mean, some weeks I'm yeah. I'm happy not working anything. Because I'm enjoying my family and my time and, and what I've earned, yeah. so it, it's all you know one of those things. <laughs> um, okay, um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, nobody commented that they want to hear the numbers for the flipping blueprint um, remodel. Well, the, well, that's the whole reason. Well, not buy the book. That was why. <laughs> that's why I told people not to buy the book. You're gonna I, give them the formula. I was, I was gonna give them. I was gonna give them the numbers right now, but right. instead, I guess everybody just wants to buy the second edition when it comes out in a month. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with the comments now. <laughs> All right, great. This is yummy. It is. It's, yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. it's completely different though. So oh, so different. When, when you're talking yeah. whiskey, scotch. Now we don't have a scotch, scotch. Right. No, it's I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of them. I like my whiskeys. I like my bourbons. Yeah. Um, uh, this is drier though. Can you feel it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, right it's, here. It's, yeah. yeah, I'd have thought that was because we were no, so it's yeah. part of it. But it really is is drier. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. Um, okay, so a couple of you guys are now finally realizing that I'm not oh. going to give the numbers. Oh, until Nick you is say here something. now. Yeah, he says, yeah, the numbers. So uh, love to hear all the right. numbers. So the, the, the second edition of the book uh, has more than the numbers. I added more flip tips in there. I added a whole other chapter about scaling your business and, and uh, a, a few other things that are more modern. Because I, I wrote that book five years ago now. Five years ago. It's crazy. Uh, we've sold tens of thousands of copies. And I know that there's, there's millions and millions of dollars have been made off of that. And uh, it's awesome because you guys took action. Um, all right. And uh, uh, all right, so I'm going to give the numbers. Ooh, I thought I wrote them down. Uh-oh. Oh, you know, I don't have them. I don't have the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> he knows them. Sort of. <laughs> I want to give the right numbers. I want to make yeah, sure. The right numbers. All right. <laughs> oh, man, it is hot in here now. Yeah. Well. Okay. So um, all the numbers have gone up. They definitely have gone up. And again, guys. The numbers I give are so that 
you can calculate a reasonable expense for your construction. Yeah. Every market's different. This is all about getting your foot in the door, writing offers um, so that it's it, it, you have a high probability of getting in, yeah. getting accepted, and going to walk in the properties and making sure that it that it all uh, pencils out. Um, and now I can tell you that I, I talked to a lot of my buddies across the U.S. and, and found out what their numbers are at, and then I, I looked at really at our numbers, and I, I talked to new investors also. So not just the guys like me that are doing, whether we're doing 20, uh, 50, or 300 deals a year, um, because you know we get numbers that are usually better than the new investors because we're better negotiators, it's bulk, it's we know what to do or not to do, all that kind of stuff. Um, so these are my numbers that I'm actually getting on my properties. These are actually a little bit higher, uh, three to four dollars more than I get on mine, but I, I, mine's bulk. Right. So these are numbers you guys should be able to get. Now each market, again, is a little different. You have to talk to contractors, you have to go out there, you have to negotiate, and you have to remember this is not HGTV, all right? <laughs> you are not right. remodeling. I, I just talked with one of my partners on a property. Like, he, he said, oh, you know, that's not really our taste. I'm like, I'm not selling the fucking house to you. I'm, <laughs> I'm selling it to the 80%. The right. 80% of Absolutely. the potential buyers, yes. right? So we got neutral tones. We got this or that. And I, I'm not doing this amazing Fifteen thousand dollar showcase wall that gives me zero return. Right. These are numbers that you should be doing. And one of my buddies, uh, uh, Jake, uh, he's he's great with this. Uh, where he's he keeps telling people, just just do what you need to do to sell it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And every market's a little different. In, in Reno, my numbers are probably five dollars less per foot than these numbers. Sure. In Utah, I'm probably eight dollars less per foot for the my Utah markets. Arizona. I mean, I might be uh, around that eight dollars also. Okay, so you guys want to hear the numbers, right? Of course, yeah. Right. Let's hear it. Yeah, the disco. Yeah. Okay. Have a drink. Yeah, you're here about you know, uh, ruining the sales of your book right here. So what? Time. What do you think of the uh, <laughs> the square glass? You know, I prefer the round glass. I'll be honest. Square glasses, you know, you can do okay with it. The problem is, is you're worried you're gonna, it's just gonna run out the side of your mouth. You got, you got to drink out a lot of lip on it. You got, you got to drink out of the corner. Yeah, that's the corner. The corner. The corner. Yeah, and that's then if you have ice cube, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. It's even more complicated because you need to chop lip though. Make sure it doesn't roll away. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So speaking of lips, so I, in the book I categorize four different levels: mm -hmm. lipstick standard right vandalized and upgraded now a couple yeah. of the things that i don't have in there is your uh luxury because luxury really varies on yes. your property I, and i it's do some unique. Yeah. yeah and i do some luxury stuff here in vegas and, and i'm probably uh i, I had probably another 15 dollars per foot on my luxury stuff Not and yeah. now on my um basically wholesale deals um i might be I'm, I'm probably close to $15 less per foot than my lipsticks. So uh, you guys can kind of take a look at those, but really right. the four categories. All right, so lipstick. Lipstick's running about $20 a foot. Uh, so if I have a, let's say I have a 2,000 square foot house uh, yeah. and I'm doing a lipstick remodel, that's $40,000 for that remodel. Right. Now lipstick is gonna be your carpets, your paints, um, your uh, uh, appliances, your fixtures, um, uh, you know, paint inside and out to some landscape, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, you're not really replacing a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe you're doing countertops and, and fit, uh, but not doing cabinets. Yeah. Uh, it, you're not doing a, a real extensive remodel. Uh, labor prices are the biggest reason why these numbers have gone up. Oh, big time. Yeah. I, I've got friends that are in the industry all across the U.S. From HVAC to flooring to uh, electrical to insulation, and everyone is saying the same thing: labor is absurd. How expensive it is. Yeah. Um, uh, so lipsticks at twenty. My standard remodels are at twenty-eight. That includes your cabinets, yeah. your full shower surrounds, 
Yeah. So, and, and for me, it, you know, in Vegas, my shower surround is a new tile shower surround built mm -hmm. in a soap box, uh, uh, some kind of tile inlays. Right. But like I was saying, in um, in Arizona, uh, for not 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 in like the nice areas of Phoenix, mm -hmm. but my off areas of uh, like uh, Lake Mojave, I was talking about earlier. Right. Um, I might just do a fiberglass insert for those. So those are closer right. to my lipsticks than yeah. my standards. Um, so $28 a foot for a standard. Vandalize is gonna be a little bit more because you have a bit more electrical, a bit more plumbing, a, I mean, yeah. some windows. That's at $32 a foot. Yeah. So not too much more for a vandalized versus a standard. But that yeah. kind of covers the the issues you have. Maybe you have to right. do kills in a couple of rooms yeah, because more the, there's yeah. a lot of spray paint, red spray paint that just yeah. seeps through any paint you put on it. Um, yeah. And then upgraded is at $42 a foot. Now upgraded is going to be your nicer house where you're actually putting in uh, shower glass, right? right. For, our, for right. our standard, we're not doing shower glass. But when you look at each bathroom uh, for shower glass, it's somewhere between $1,000 and $2,500, depending on the size of that shower. Um, that really adds up, and that's where those can come from. Uh, maybe you're doing an extra 1000 or 2000 worth of appliances. Yeah. So that, that's how that price per foot really goes in. Maybe you do a nicer flooring. So instead of your, um, your kind of cheap rental grade carpet in a standard, because you can still do cheap carpet, you're doing more of a designer uh, carpet that, that adds yeah. cost. So uh, 42 bucks for your upgraded remodels. All right, so I'm gonna run through the numbers. We're at $20 for the lipstick, 28 for the standard, 32 for the vandalized and upgraded is at $42 a foot. So again, if you have your square footage of a house, if it's on an upgrade, you're doing it. Let's say you have a boutique house on the, on the coast in California. And yes, you can get these numbers in California. I've talked to plenty of people where they say that, oh, you have to do a $300,000 remodel. You can do that for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's right. okay. Yeah, but the people are there. You, you gotta right shop price. it around. You gotta talk yeah. to people. You gotta make it happen. Get multiple um, votes. Yeah, but you want to do a, it's a small bungalow, and you gotta do it really nice, thousand square foot house, forty two dollars a foot, forty two thousand dollars on that remodel. You don't have to spend a hundred thousand dollars on that remodel. Yeah. And, and it's like it's like oh, it's gotta be nice. I gotta put in a, you know the labor is the same no matter what the material is for the most part. Um, you know, when you get into things like countertops, uh, that, and you, you go to upgrade and, and luxury style, you definitely, you just start doing waterfalls, you're doing uh, electrical pop-ups, all kinds of uh, the specialty things. So that costs more. But overall, those are the numbers that we're seeing uh, across the country right now. And these are our post-COVID numbers. Now, we're not out of COVID yet. Not yet. Right? Yeah. And, and labor prices are still close. going up. Yeah. Um, these numbers, I can tell you, over the last year and a half, have changed twice. Uh, and no, so this would, this this would be the third variation of them, because we were seeing uh, material prices go up, and we saw that, yeah. and then all of a sudden labor, labor doubled yeah. and yeah. labor doubled again, and it was mm -hmm. like holy crap. Yeah. Um, but that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, uh, so if anybody has any questions on that, I will take questions. We're a little past our four o'clock hour, but that's okay. Um, yeah, just a few minutes. This has been fun. Yeah. So let's yeah. give another shout out to yeah. Mr. Gregory Greg, Cook from it. Castle and nice. Cook. Um, I actually play, uh, I used to play soccer with Greg. Yeah, I remember uh, the photo. You guys were like champions or something. Oh yeah, people we, that were old. Let's see, uh, <laughs> he's a handsome fella. Uh, focus, there focus, we there we go. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll put his uh, info in the comments, uh, but if you have if you have buyers, so it's, that's one thing. If you as an investor, you need to find out where these people are moving, and sometimes they want to buy. Mm -hmm. And as realtors, you want to work with a good lender, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you want to find somebody that closes deals. Yeah. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, any of the big names, stay away from them. They're not commission based. Uh, yeah. Private uh, brokers are commission based. They're yep. working for their money. They want that loan to be successful. Well, uh, something that, that's even more important, even with those private guys, is 
uh, find the ones that also self fund like one of the big yeah. banks because they have a better chance of closing it because they're not going to turn around and just sell the loan. Yep. And so it's real important. And, and Greg's company does that. Yep. So yep. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, Greg, cheers. Salute. Let's. Uh, yep. Thank you. What do you think? You like this? Yeah, I wouldn't like that. I'm, I'm not talking about <laughs> the, the booze. I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, your show? Guys. Sure. Yeah. No, it's. Yeah. yeah it's fun. Good questions, huh? Yeah. And, you know, anytime you want, I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. yeah so, I bet you will. This is just my first. Yeah. We get to drink your whiskey. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I don't know your tequila guy. I'll drink tequila. Oh, I've got I've got other whiskeys in here. Yeah. I've done whiskey shows before. <laughs> uh, we did the uh, uh, we did the Japanese whiskey. Oh, I tried your Japanese whiskey. We did, whiskey. Oh, yeah. we did one of the at yeah. that sips of Yamazaki. Event. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a fun event. Um, guys, uh, uh, please, if you have any more questions, please ask them. Uh, so, Chris, you're the broker of Vegas Homes Realty. Yes. If anybody wants to reach out to Chris, I'll put his contact information uh, in the, the post here. Um, uh, great guy. I wouldn't be working with him if he wasn't. Uh, we, we probably, you and I, as far as investment uh, flips and everything, we probably worked on, I don't know, 50, 50 yeah. plus, 100 A plus lot. deals. Uh, yeah. Just real together, plus yeah. all the other hundreds of uh, deals that we've been on. Uh, yeah as well <laughs> Amazing, um, yeah. yeah so um plenty yeah. of plenty of experience on the investment side of things um Absolutely. so i appreciate you coming on here and oh, sharing some you. knowledge yeah um, i enjoy it i liked your answer to the uh, the fisbo question that was yeah. a good one yeah uh, well, i mean because as I get a, thrown everything you know <laughs> as, a, as a realtor Even stuff we don't talk about <laughs> yeah as, as a realtor you got to be looking at yeah. um the uh uh you know how do you get that listing or how do you get that buyer Right, because right? at the end of the day, if you're an investor, a realtor, uh, a car salesman, uh, I don't care what it is, how are you going to get paid? Is the real question, right? Right, yeah. and the cool thing about real estate is we get to not only say how do we get paid, but how do we help the people too, right? You know, yeah. how do we get them into that house, or how do we get them out of that house, right? Because sometimes the house is the biggest burden that they have, sure. Um, and it could be uh, just a really rewarding business and financially lucrative for you as well. Oh, sure. Right? Well, so, and, and a for sale by owner, uh, a lot of times those people are their own worst enemy and they don't realize it. And so, yeah, you, you do end up helping them in the end, which is why uh, over 90% of them end up selling through a realtor later. Uh, the yeah. stats don't lie. Yeah. They start out one way, but they end up another. That's yeah. what it does. <laughs> um, Joseph, hey buddy, uh, you are always welcome. I still want to do more deals with you. Um, uh, give me a reach out on a, uh, uh, a message on Facebook and let's uh, figure something out and I want to see where you're at. Uh, Matt, you asked the question, what's the best tequila and whiskey you have had? Ooh, those are, that's, let's see, it's hard, right? It's a, <laughs> okay, so. Um, so Matt, my I'm gonna go with what my favorite tequila is. Okay. Because I've had really, I mean I've. <laughs> you had some nice ones. Too. Oh yeah, I, I I've had ones that uh, will eat up your entire commission for a shot. <laughs> um, oh yeah, oh, it's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah no. But uh, <laughs> my uh, my favorite tequila is Dos Artes, D O S A R T E S. Extra Anejo. Um, with COVID, I cannot get that bottle. Ah, um, there, there's nice. some, I, I, and it's, I need to order a couple. I know there's a place out of California that I can still get it. Um, I haven't bought it, but I, I can get the Reserva, I can get the Blanco, the uh, Reposado, and the Anejo, but I cannot get the true Extra Anejo for it. That is my go-to number one tequila for drinking and just straight up enjoying. Um, you know, I've got uh, I've got a few bottles here uh, that uh, I've got a bottle up here that's it's called a Don Pilar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm probably got, I think I got like 30 <laughs> bottles on my shelves here. Uh, Don Pilar is uh, uh, really good. Um, uh, let's see, um, you know, 1942 is an easy go-to. 
but it's not great when you really for for my palate it's mm-hmm. oh, i'll drink it but it's it's not what, what i'm going to prefer right. um but again uh a lot of this stuff price isn't an issue uh dos artes is going to run me and if i can get it 150 to 250 dollars for that bottle right and uh, you know, in an evening, I can drink a bottle. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll say, anytime I get like a huge paycheck, it, it, I just run out and treat myself to uh, yeah. Johnny Walker Blue Label. I love yep. it. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, it's not terribly expensive. Yeah. Somewhere between 200 to $300, depending on where yeah. you go to find it. And Lou. it's a little inflated at the moment. So, yeah. yeah. Lou yeah. is smooth. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, yeah. you've had green? Oh, I've drank them all. I've okay. had Johnny Walker. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so, again, there's there's all different price levels for all these booze, right, right? And it's right. and when you really look at it, uh, Valerie, you are welcome. I'm glad you're back in the group, and we're uh, we're we're going after yeah, things everybody. together. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah, um, uh, you, you got to go with what your palate goes for. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a twenty dollar bottle or a two thousand dollar bottle, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I've I've had and it's whiskey, tequila, wine, whatever. I've had ten thousand dollar bottles of stuff. That I thought was just absolute garbage, and I wouldn't even buy it for twenty bucks. <laughs> sure, it's, because it's, I don't like it. In some really cool packaging yeah. and say, yeah. "Hey, this is so." Like this. So yeah. the biggest thing is, you know, be honest about what you like and what you want to do um, uh, in your business, in your real estate, and uh, oh, sure. um, yeah. So uh, Matt, uh, the uh, and as far as whiskey goes, uh, for me. Um, you know the the Yamazaki, I think it was it, it was the twenty five or the thirty. I had it uh, not the last time in, I was in Hawaii, but the time before. Um, I thought that was an exceptional whiskey. And we uh, just had the twelve year. Um, the other night. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, the, the uh, well, a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, you should have the eighteen because the eighteen is great. But okay. when you get into aging of whiskeys and scotches and stuff, it really kind of, it, it really jumps. Oh, 18 sure. is a great one, and that's why we did this one uh, for this show, the Glen Rose. Mm-hmm. But once you get into 20, 25, and 30s, um, it's more of the prestige of the bottle versus the, the quality and taste. Right. But yeah. but the Anzaki, which is actually all still made in Scotland, <laughs> yeah. um, they just relabel it. Uh, that was that was some pretty phenomenal stuff. Yeah. All right. So again, guys, thank you for participating. We had some really awesome questions in this group. We had a yep. whole bunch of people uh, uh, hanging out and drinking with us. Um, uh, Joe, Matt, Nick, uh, Valerie, uh, uh, James, Gabe, uh, all you guys who are participating, awesome. Thank you. Uh, Chris Miller, yeah. broker of Vegas Homes Realty. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank, for, thanks, everybody, for being here. Appreciate and it. cheers. You can find us on Facebook. Um, I'll put Chris's information. Gregory Cook, a special thank out. Yeah, thanks, thanks to again. you for uh, providing the booze for the, today's episode. Yeah. And uh, uh, cheers. Safe investing. And uh, uh, till till our next deal we do together. All right. There you go. Have a good night. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.